Hello everyone, and welcome to part one of my Prismata Puzzle Pack series. Um, <clears throat> a couple days ago, Lunark released the first Puzzle Pack for Prismata. It might in fact have been yesterday, I don't remember. Um, and I'm not like a super huge fan of puzzles, but uh, it, it's fun enough, and I don't mind giving Lunark, you know, ten bucks to get these. They're free if you got the Steel Splitter tier, so you might already have these if you're a Prismata player. Um, <clears throat> So, uh, as you can see, I have not done most of these. I did the, the three free ones they included. Um, puzzles are at varying difficulty levels. And um, I don't really anticipate finishing all of them. Uh, they're hard, I'm sure, and I'm not like the best puzzle player, but I'll, I'll get through some of them and you'll see me work through uh, the solutions to those uh, on camera. I should be able to do at least the three and four star ones, perhaps some five stars. As you can see, I got this one. It was hard, but not impossible. Anyway, uh, so we'll just sort of do as many of these as, as I can, and you guys have fun watching, I guess. So, uh, as I said, no no promise that there will be solutions to everything in all these videos, but I'll, I'll get what I can. So let's get started with uh, Splitter Splatter. Destroy all enemy forces. We have three differently sized splitters. Interesting. What did I say? Raid splitter, steel splitter, and guard splitter? So the obvious, like, I, this this seems obvious, right? We should kill this, but I bet that's not correct somehow. Yeah, because then when the opponent attacks, they get to kill the guard splitter we're attacking with, and also they can kill uh, this raid splitter. Whereas I bet doing this is a bit more clever, because, yeah. Then, they can kill this guy, but they only have three attack left over, which they can't do anything with, right? Or, they kill the, the, the little dude. Then we spend three turns attacking Scorches, and then this guy can survive forever against Scorches. So, that seems like the idea. Interesting that he attacked anyway instead of holding it. Not that it matters, but okay. So the obvious play is not always right. Think about what your opponent will do. Fine. Yep. Nothing too remarkable to say about this one. Tatsu Oxide, was it? Yeah, interesting. So, all right. <clears throat> We have a total of four. This will produce pixies two more times. We have six. How many turns can we live? We have to kill him. We can let him attack two times, but not three, right? So we have to kill the Shadow Fang on our third turn, which is. So I. Th I need to file this bug. I assume someone else has already filed it, but they, along with this update, they like. Um, changed from global chat to like language specific chats as part of like getting ready for to internationalize things but um how do I even would it be interface no not streaming options right I'd, I don't know anyway now like <clears throat> the fact that I muted global chat permanently no longer matters because every game I get put into English chat. Every time I turn on Prismata, I'm in English chat and I have to go mute it again and that doesn't persist and I find that very upsetting. Uh, I don't see any way to like keep it muted, but okay, fine. Um, I can't believe the default is showing you text from random people talking in game and has been that way for like four years. What a terrible decision. I'm sure it makes sense when there's only like 10. Anyway, shut up, we're doing the puzzles. Uh, so we have to kill him in three turns. What I'd like to do is kill off a wall so that I can freeze the other wall and deny absorb, right? That seems pretty good because in three turns, the amount of damage we'll have is six pixies plus this three times is 12. The opponent has what? Six, 12 health. So, ooh. I mean, so like this, this feels about right. It's, well, why am I freezing the force field then? My thinking is this kind of makes the opponent defend wall onto wall, I guess. 
But so does this. The opponent doesn't really want to defend force field, force field onto wall, absorbing for one, do they? Maybe they do. Because then I can't freeze wall later. But I, I think this is correct. So, so let's see what happens when we try this. Oh, of course. We don't have to do 12 damage because we can freeze the wall for three. Alright, this was unsuccessful. So maybe I'm just supposed to do this to deny them granularity? Right? I mean, this, this is a little exploit, I suppose. Doesn't seem very good compared to something that could kill a wall. I have five damage now. There's this again, I guess. Yeah, this doesn't work either. Hmm. Hang on. Did I actually have an answer earlier? There's, there's an extra pixie left over. When I tried this, this line originally, I didn't realize I was going to have a pixie left after the opponent breached my Tatsu. So maybe this was right all along. Let's, let's just revisit this line. Yeah, see, I can't... I can deny absorb, but then the extra pixie is no good because I won't be freezing the wall anymore. really useful to make opponent lose a wall, but I'm not sure, like, is this, maybe this is enough. No, they would never choose to lose a wall this way. Right? This is the only way to make them lose a wall. So maybe I shouldn't do that. This kills the force. Oh, this kills a wall. Uh huh. And then next turn, we can freeze wall, kill force field. Uh, bang. And this last pixie is to let us finish off the wall. I see. Clear this puzzle, you were required to freeze a wall, then a force seal, then a wall in that order. Interesting. So. This is. I, I, well, I guess the reason I had trouble is I didn't. I saw the only way of denying the opponent from getting absorb as kill one wall and then freeze the other forever. Um, which you could do by freezing a force field. Um, but if you, in fact, freeze all their force fields, then they can't all, all but one of their... If you kill all but one of their force fields, you can freeze the last one and they have no granularity. Which means you can also deny absorb. Um, cool. While also giving them less absorb on this first turn, right? This, this sets them up for an exploit for zero, just like the old line did, but it also gives them only one absorb on this turn instead of two, and that's where the extra damage came from. Cool. Reservoir. So I, this is, they, they include three puzzles for free to let you discover that you love puzzles and want to give them money. Um, and this one, uh, I did just sort of like random stuff on, and it worked on the first try. It's, it's pretty simple. Simpler than the last one, I think. Um, <clears throat> it's funny, actually, when I like just sat down to look at this, from the title, Reservoir, I just assumed the opponent had another force field, and I was like, well, better click all these rhinos to kill their force fields. Um, they don't have any force fields, but it turns out to be correct after all. And they don't have any reservoir. So this gets the opponent non-granular, and we absorb onto force field, which is nice. And now 
we can afford to hold rhinos back instead of uh, this way we get some absorb and we don't have to sack force fields either. Then we can absorb onto the second force field. I think this works, right? This must be what I did. No. I wish to absorb onto the force field, I believe. This somehow doesn't feel quite right. Ah, right. Then you absorb onto this rhino. Sacking a force field to keep the, the rhino alive, which is important once you get the opponent. You don't need more attack, you just need to be able to absorb all their attack. There we go. Pretty simple. <clears throat> These enemy force field, uh, forces can be defeated with three force fields and three rhinos, but not with two force fields and four rhinos. Um, so, I mean, there was sort of like an interesting trick here, which is absorbing onto force field, but you sort of fall into that line when you attack with all the rhinos, which you clearly want to do. There's no real reason to hold any back here. And uh, you might as well hold these two rhinos, it's just free. You might as well defend with the rhinos because force fields are better. You better attack here, and then, like, what are you going to do but absorb onto your last force field, right? Um, this is the first pl spot where you're like, wait a minute, did I make a mistake? But actually, it's fine. The Great Tia Enigma. We're already up to four stars. How exciting. Destroy all enemy forces. And they basically have a Tia and two smartses and a bunch of soak. So it's sort of tempting to hold back Dune Mech to maximize my absorb. Hmm. But it's sort of nice also to get value out of this Doomed Wall if I can. Uh, good. And they're using a special smartses that doesn't have the click ability. So the game knows to estimate this correctly. Um, I clearly have to hold something back. This is not a correct first turn. This clearly loses. Um, but I'm not sure what to hold back. They all seem okay. Dune back is the most obvious thing because I don't have to lose it. But it means I will... Well, let's see. Four... Eight, no, seven, eight, nine. Okay, I could do that and not lose the Doomed Wall. And then I, I don't know. Let's try this and see what happens. These units all have lifespans, which is like, an, indica an indicator, like a hint that, hey, maybe you should use them this way, but also that could be a trick, so. Um. There's not really much use in them. Um... Keeping the Doom Wall alive, I guess, right? The only thing I have to keep alive at the end of all this is a Steel Splitter, right? Assuming that I can survive the Tia, Steel Splitter wins. No. <clears throat> it has to be more than that because the Smorkuses are, are not fragile. You have to do two damage a turn. Hmm. Can I breach the Tia? Doesn't look like it. I mean, she has two health though. That's pretty interesting. So 
suggests maybe something to try. What if I did this? It gives me less absorb, but more damage. Actually, I could absorb onto Doomed Wall here. Sack the Feral. Or I could sack the Grimbot, who's clearly worse than a Feral, right? Sure. This leaves me well positioned to hold back the Doomed Mac, I guess. Obviously not winning, right? This this leaves me with the steel splitter, as I had said would be enough, but clearly is not. Because they get to the Tarsier as well. This hang on, maybe this is right. They click Tia for the last time. Uh no, not quite. I was thinking that I then absorb onto the splitter, right? And the Tarsier just chews through the force fields one at a time, kills the Tia eventually, while the Steel Splitter defends the Tarsier. Then I click Splitter to kill Smorkus. But that one turn leaves my Tarsier vulnerable, right? So if I could get to this position, but with one more Engineer, um, or rather with one health worth of stuff converted to an engineer but being in a similar spot, which I think I could do <clears throat> by sacking the feral instead of the botch, like this. That leaves another engineer alive, which gives me the ability on the turn I click splitter to still keep the Tarsier alive. So I was doing this, right? Yeah. Okay. Now I hold everything, absorbing on the splitter. I feel like the enemy actually kills me by not clicking the Tia if I do this. Is the bot smart enough about that? Because I lose the botch, right? And like, I'm just doing one damage and then I lose the doomed mech and then their Tia kills me? Let's see if the bot finds this line. No. Interesting. So you see what I mean though? We're now invincible and dealing one damage per turn. I'm gonna have to hit space bar a lot of times, but. get there. Now I click Splitter killing this, and my energy keeps the Tarsier alive. Um. I guess. But this was not actually, like, a legitimate win, right? The enemy ex should exploit this by not clicking Tia. Just wait me out. Wait for my lifespan units to die. Alright, well, I guess they didn't find that line. Five stars. Chilling mystery. Destroy everything. Clearly, there's going to have to be some breaching this game for the, um, well, 
there's a breach. There's breaching every game, but a lot of breaching because we've carefully chosen units with particular amounts of health, like a lot. Right, they didn't give give the enemy tarsiers or whatever. You're gonna have to figure out how to breach uh, for the right amounts and, and so on. Uh, what did I just see a mouse pop up for? Oh, for this, I see. I'd love to see one for like this grenade mech with no click ability or this drake with no click ability, but okay. So the enemy attacks for five, nine every turn. They have alternating isos. We attack for five and then nine and then five and then nine. What exactly is our correct defense against nine attack? We don't have very good defense, do we? Um, if you use an Aegis, then you have four attack left, just force field onto Doomball, which is like getting exploited a bit. You could sack three force fields onto Doomball, but you can only do that once. After that, you get no absorb at all, so that doesn't seem very good. So I guess we're sacking Aegis force field each turn. Um, until we can't, and then it'll be exciting. How about attack? Um, there's obviously, like, you can ruin some enemy granularity by doing this, but it doesn't seem very good. They'll have this back next turn. Uh, although, I guess next turn we're only attacking for five, so... What if I did do this? They would have to sack wall and two shield modules. Yeah, this does not seem like it does much of anything. All right, well, let's just try something. Let's just, like, play and see what happens. Now freezing this does two damage, which is nice. So I'll try it. Here they can breach, but they don't kill anything. That's nice. Um... I really need to kill this matrix, but breaching to do anything else is not that important. So I could consider keeping these cryo rays alive to threaten to freeze these again next turn, which could be useful. The enemy can, if they choose, kill the cryo rays, of course, but in that case all my attackers gain some health. That seems good. Because, like, what I want to kill first is Drake, right? And doing extra damage now doesn't help with that. I don't know. Um, is there some reason this could be any good? Doesn't seem like it. The enemy will have four health next turn. Like, hooray, I get to do some damage to an ISO, but does that really matter? I'll be doing four damage, which is just enough to finish this stuff off. I can't get to any attackers again anyway, so I guess I would kill this, or hurt this. Let's try this and see what happens. I don't think it's right. I think I'd rather just hold back the... Uh... Oh yeah, five, not four. Rather hold back the attack. See, because like, what did this do? Nothing, right? Mm, on the other hand, we get to kill two and a drake and damage this. Oh boy, we gotta kill that. Oh no, we lose now. Yeah, they just kill the ISO, and then I can't ever um, kill one of these four health guys. So, okay, damaging the ISO did not seem to be a winning line. So what if we did this instead, what I proposed first, and said, look, this extra damage is worth nothing. Go ahead and kill my cryos if you want, or don't. They did. So now I can get through and kill a drake straight away. Hmm. 
What if I apply a similar trick and say, look, go ahead and kill my cryo if you want, or I'll leave this shield module alive. They don't really want to kill the cryo, they want to kill Iso Gauss Cannon. And when they do, my cryo will still freeze this and I can get to the second drake. Oh, I have a lot of damage. <laughs> um... Well... Maybe I shouldn't freeze this then? No, of course I should, because... This is never getting value ever again if I kill their last defender. I didn't realize I had so little damage. Um, so clearly targeted the wrong ISO. Should have been one of these. Now I still have four damage. But I seem way behind on these ISOs. Yeah. Way behind. Hmm. So it would be really nice if I could somehow leave my grenade mech alive, but that seems like very much implausible. How on earth could I do that? Well, this turn I'm sort of conceptually breaching for two, right? Um, if I were to click both cryos, I could breach for, for two. If I could increase that to breach for four, that would be enough to kill a drake, which would be a great step forward. Um, but I'm not sure how I could. Freezing this matrix seems very strong. Like, I was thinking, hey, if I went back and froze matrix on some turn, I could add two damage, but I've already done that. have way less damage. And like, I probably could have managed those ISOs a little bit better, but not enough to make up for this whole disaster. Right, like, this thing I'm killing is not firing next turn. If I had chosen a different ISO to kill, I could be killing one of these, and then they just attack for two next turn. But that's still too much. Okay, so first of all, are drakes, like, actually the right thing to kill? And they must be, right? They're doing more damage to me than anything else, and they have less health per damage than anything else. So they're clearly the most breach vulnerable targets. Um... I mean, I guess we could try freezing... Freezing... Ugh this on turn one and see if we somehow create granularity exploits. We do. Interesting. Yeah, this denies a door like a lot. Okay, that's that's cool, I guess. Now I get a Drake, and I probably want to damage this guy, I suspect, because next turn I'm attacking for what? Um, nine. That's Drake. Might as well kill Iso. No, not nine. Two less than that. Seven. Because they're going to kill an Iso. Hmm. 
Ugh, that'll kill an Iso and a Gauss Cannon. So I'm actually just attacking for two, five, six? Is that right? Yeah, six. Sending two of it here, and then two more to an Iso. So I guess it should be one of these Isos. So that when I finally manage to kill it, it'll be one of the ones that's about to attack. Like so. Three damage does not kill any of my stuff, which is nice. So next turn I'm attacking for six, right? That's enough to kill an ISO that's about to hurt me, so I should target that. I'll probably have to kill the grenade mech soon, though. Not sure if that's this coming turn or not, though. Probably no. I think I can get away with not killing it next turn. Right, because they're now attacking for just three, which kills one ISO but not the other. And then five, which would kill the other. Hmm. No, no. Uh, oh, it'll just be three again, right? That would finish both off, but I can actually hurt them even more by finishing this off. Yes. No, it'll have three health. I'm only attacking for two next turn. Hmm. So suppose I killed this. The extra damage they do doesn't really matter to me that much. And suggests that I attacked the wrong ISO. Yeah, I'm up a three health Gauss Cannon, right? That's probably good enough. Yeah. Okay, so... Freeze a Matrix to kill Engineers, you can freeze Engineers to kill an Energy Matrix. Yeah, that was, that was the main uh, point of interest in this puzzle. There were several turns where I had to, like, be careful about which ISO to freeze, or to damage. Um, I ended up rewinding to figure that answer out instead of, like, actually just figuring it out. Um, but that was something that you can just sort of do by trial and error. Uh, this... This freeze, it was not obvious to me that this would be a great idea. Um, but if I counted it out, I would have, of course, seen what's coming. Cool. Well, that was some puzzles, and I think that that will be enough for this first episode. Uh, next episode, rather than continuing into the hard ones in this section, I think I'll just go do the beginnings of another section and, and see how the different um, categories are. I think if I try to do these, it's going to be like pretty slow going. Anyway, I hope you guys found this useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.